In this video, we're going to do some examples of demonstrating hybridization to explain bonding in a molecule. So we're going to do the example of CH4. We're going to show how hybridization plays a role in bonding involved in CH4. Um, and I'm going to carry this example out in, on a separate document, but you can carry it out here. We're going to start off by doing the Lewis structure. We're then going to show the energy level diagrams, and then we're going to do what's called an orbital representation of that structure. Uh, so let's go and uh, make our Lewis structure for CH4. So this is CH4 over here. And uh, what we need to do is we need to make energy level diagrams for all the atoms involved in the bonding. Um, notice that there's four hydrogens, so I'm just going to make one energy level diagram for hydrogen over here. Um, and uh, its electron involved in the bonding is the one that's in the 1s. And I'm just going to put times four. I don't need to draw this four times. We know that there's four hydrogens there. Okay. Um, and we also have to do this drawing for uh, carbon. So I'll make my energy level diagram for carbon. And uh, typically we just need to focus on the, um, the valence electrons involved, but I'm going to draw these all in right now. So I'll put the, for carbon, so this is energy over here, energy over here. This is for hydrogen. And this over here is for carbon. Um, and so we have the 1s filled out. Um, so this is 1s. Then we get into the 2s over here. That's filled out. And then we get into the 2p, and we just have this over here. Um, and so we have to explain the bonding that happens. And notice that you need to have um, uh, four bonds form in carbon because you have four hydrogens. Uh, and uh, we don't have that right now. We only have uh, two single electrons available. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to show the process of hybridization and promotion. And so we're going to promote this electron to the empty p orbital over here. So this is called electron promotion. And then we're going to mix or hybridize. So mix, which also means hybridize. The, the four boxes are going to come together. They won't, the energy level they come together at will be an energy in between that of the 2p and the 2s. So let's just say somewhere around here. So now we have four boxes. We have one electron that was in the 2s box, one electron from the original 2p, another electron from the original 2p, and then the electron that was promoted is right here. Um, and so now that we have four boxes and they're made from 1s and 3p's, they're called sp3. So this is sp3, 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 sp3. And so the bonding that's going to happen is between the single hydrogens and the, um, and the uh, sp3 single electrons there. So this is in carbon. Okay, so remember this is carbon. These are the hybridized carbon now. So hybridized. And I'm just going to draw the four separate hydrogens. So here's one, here's one, here's one, just to further show what's happening. And here's another one. And what's going to happen is that they are going to um, uh, overlap. So this is a 1s from one hydrogen, the 1s from another, 1s from another, 1s from another. These are not in the same atom. These are in separate atoms. Um, and so they'll overlap like this. So in the carb, one of the sp3 electrons from the carbon will overlap with a 1s electron from the from one hydrogen, and then another sp3 from the carbon will overlap with another um, 1s electron from the other hydrogen, and then another will do the same thing here, and another here, and that's going to explain all four of those bonds. What does that essentially look like if you want to do an orbital representation? Um, we would draw, let's do our carbon like this. Carbon's in the middle there. 
And we'll make a little little balloon diagram to make it look like a a hybridized um, SP3. So essentially, um, this would be one of the SP3 electrons here. This would be an SP3 electron here. This would be an SP3 electron here. This would be an SP3 electron here. And the hydrogens, um, they have their 1s, so that's spherical, so we can make it overlapping here, one overlapping here, one overlapping here, one overlapping here. And we can represent the hydrogen electron with a different color. Let's do that. Let's get, uh, let's say, red. And we have to make sure they're opposite spins in the regions of overlap. And um, uh, since these are direct overlap, each of these is a sigma bond. Sigma bond. Sigma bond. There, there, and then also a sigma bond over here. They're regions of direct overlap. So in this molecule, we have four sigma bonds. Sigma, sigma, sigma. Sigma. And so we explained that we have four sigma bonds. We showed how they formed through the process of hybridization within carbon. Um, we had to do that in carbon, but not in hydrogen because it already had its single electrons there. Um, there's only one electron, so it doesn't make sense to promote it. Um, it's already in its one shape and orientation that it needs. Um, but overall, the type of hybrid hybridization that we see around the carbon atom is an sp3 hybridization. So if I ask you for what is a hybridization around the central atom of this molecule, it's sp3. And we're able to determine that by drawing out the energy level diagram and showing that electron promotion between the s and the three p's that are there. Um, there's, another, there's another simpler way to find out what the hybridization is, and I'll show you that technique. Um, it's basically just about counting all the electron domains around your, um, your central atom and using that as a way to figure out the hybridization. Um, so it's a shorthand method. Uh, I, you can use it during multiple choice or if you want to double check your work. But let's do the shorthand method here. So I'll just do it in this green color. So here's my CH4. And what you do is you count the amount of electron, you count the electron domain. So the first electron domain you count is an S. Then the second one is a P. Then the third one is a P. Then the fourth one is a P. So what we have is S, P, 3. If there was another domain, you would then make that a D. And then another one, another D, so D2. So just by counting the domain, starting with S, then going P, 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 and then going to D if there was more, that's how you could do your um, hybridization of a central atom. So um, what we have is an S, P, 3 hybridized carbon. Um, it works for essentially any molecule you want to do. Um, we will try another example. We'll do the example of, um, of ammonia. So we'll do ammonia over here. NH3. We want to explain its process using, um, using uh, hybridization. Uh, so first we're going to draw a Lewis structure. And uh, we'll actually predict what it is even before we draw the diagrams. Uh, we can count the electron domain. So S, this counts as one up here, the lone pairs, P, P, P. So the nitrogen atom is going to be sp3 hybridized. So nitrogen atom is going to be sp3. Um, and uh, our carbons, they're just going to remain as s. Our hydrogens are going to be s because we don't really need to hybridize the hydrogens since they only have one electron in their, um, in their shell there. So uh, just to, to mention up here, the carbon is sp3, and the hydrogen is simply s. Uh, but let's go ahead and do this example for nitrogen using the same process. Um, we predicted it would be sp3 um, for nitrogen. Uh, and then for hydrogen, if you want to count the electron domains, um, you can say that um, you only have one domain for hydrogen, so that would be s, simply that. Um, again, shorthand way to answer multiple choice questions quickly. But let's uh, go ahead and do our diagrams for 
um, nitrogen and for uh, hydrogen. So for nitrogen, we have um, 1s2, 2s2, and then 7 electrons total. So we have 3 electrons here. Uh, and this is for nitrogen specifically. And then for, for hydrogen, we simply have 1s. So this is 1s here, 2s, and then 2p. You'll notice that uh, the bonding will happen between uh, these two p's and this hydrogen here. Um, and don't forget there's three hydrogens, so we should actually draw three of them. Um, when we do this, again, if you don't want to draw all three, you can simply uh, draw uh, one and then do times three. Uh, now, in this case, theoretically, you wouldn't really need the process of hybridization to explain the bonding. Um, because you have three electrons up here that can connect with the three electrons from each hydrogen below or the one electron from each three hydrogen below. Um, but hybridization actually is still a good process to explain this here. So we will explain this using hybridization because it will give the better shape for the molecule overall with better bond angles um, and with the proper energies. So we're going to show that we need um, a process to happen uh, where mixing is going to occur. We can't really promote an electron upwards. Um, we can't take one out of the 2s to put in the 2p right now because we don't really need that. Um, but we will make hybridization happen. In other words, we'll just mix our 2p, our 2s over here with our 2p's over here. And when we do that mixing that happens, we'll do hybridization. Or mixing we'll get um, energy levels intermediates to the 2s and the 2p. We'll get the um, 2s electrons that were there before, together paired, and then the single 2ps. But we don't call these p's anymore or s's anymore because it's made from 1s and 3ps. These are all sp3s, sp3, 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 sp3. So these are sp3 hybridized at this point. Um, and uh, we're going to connect them with the, uh, the 1s electrons from the hydrogens. So this is a 1s, 1s, 1s. We can just call it s. Um, this one will bond with this one. This one will bond with this one. This one will bond with this one. So here we have some direct overlap happening. And you're probably guessing, oh, there's a lone, there's, there's a pair of electrons here. What does that correspond to? That's the lone pair. Um, so this is simply the lone pair on the nitrogen. And so if you want to do an orbital representation, you can make your little hybridized sp3. Um, they have one electron in there each. Uh, on top, this would be your lone pair that you have. So up and down arrows like that. And then we can do our overlap with hydrogen. With the um, opposite spin in there. So up and down there. Um, and so this is our orbital representation diagram with opposite spins in there. Um, and we also have our lone pair over here. Uh, I shouldn't circle that because it looks like a 1s, but it's not overlapping there, so there's no bond. Um, where we have this direct overlap, these are sigma bonds. So that's a sigma bond. This is a sigma bond. This is a sigma bond. Nope, that's not because there's no overlap there. And we were probably scared and thinking that doesn't make sense. Um, and this is a sigma bond over here as well because there's direct overlap. So all of these are simply sigma bonds forming our single bonds. Um, and so what we've shown here is the hybridization to form in the ammonia molecule. Um, we didn't have a direct electron promotion because we had all our single electrons that we needed for bonding in this case. Um, so we really just had the mixing 
portion, so to speak, where the 2S and the 2P mix together to get this, which gives us a better prediction of the shape overall and better bond angles um, when we study these experimentally. Um, so these, this was hybridization at the SP3 level for um, ammonia, and we also saw hybridization at the SP3 level for CH4. In the next video, we'll do one more example, which is the SF6 to see what the hybridization is there.